Welcome back to the Betting Pros PGA podcast. I'm Pat Fitzmorris. That's Bo McBrayer. PGA Tour continues its Midwest swing this week with the John Deere Classic. Climb aboard your tractor for our full betting preview of the John Deere. We will also quickly recap the Rocket Mortgage Classic. And at the end of the show, we'll give you our one and done picks for the week. The Betting Pros PGA podcast is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the place to go for best ball fantasy football contests. But you might not have known that Underdog is golf contests as well. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find Underdog in the App Store. And don't forget to register with the promo code DPGOLF. Claim your special pick and to get a first-time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. More on Underdog and its golf contests a little bit later. Wild finish at the Rocket Mortgage Classic in Detroit. The wind really picked up on Sunday, so we did not get a final day birdie fest, but we did get plenty of drama down the stretch. Cam Davis finished minus 18 to win by a shot over four players. Akshay Batia, Minwoo Lee, Davis Thompson, and Aaron Rye. It's the second ever PGA Tour win for Davis. Both have come at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. The lanky Australian also won in Detroit in 2021. Davis was one off the lead going into Sunday. Opened his final round with a bogey, but then made three birdies on the front side to shoot a 34 and get to minus 18. Uh, Davis lost a shot with a bogey on 14, a par 5, then birdied the par 5 17th to get back to 18 under, and he had a nice up and down to par the 18th hole. That proved to be enough. Uh, For some of the runners up, missed opportunities and heartbreak. Aaron Ryan, Akshay Batia were the co-leaders going into the final round. Rye opened with a birdie, but only made two more birdies the rest of the day and shot an even par 72. Uh, Akshay made the turn at minus 18 and rattled off eight straight pars on the back nine, but then he three putted the 18th green, missing a four foot par putt that would have forced a playoff. Um, but he had also missed a nine foot birdie putt on 17. Young Akshay has to feel like he let a win slip through his grass. Two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. Uh, Also very frustrating for those of us who bet on young Akshay or had him in a one and done pool as uh, one of us bet on him. One of us had him in a one and done. Minwoo Lee will also have some regrets. Uh, Minwoo carded a seven on the par five seventh hole, three putting from just over six feet. Uh, Then got back into contention by birdieing five of the next 10 holes. Then Minwoo also bogeyed the 18th hole to cost himself a sudden death playoff berth. Davis Thompson had a 68 on Sunday. One of the guys who finished second and could actually feel good about what he did. Um, 68 was a very good round in those conditions. One of the lowest of the day, but he was not able to drop a 21-foot birdie try on the 18th. He, too, finished one shot out of a playoff. Well, what were your takeaways from the Rocket Mortgage Classic? I mean, Sunday was brutal. It was they had a drop in temperature, fifteen twenty degrees, and the wind picked up. And even though the the course was wet, it worked against them. Where it got tougher, even though it was receptive out there, uh, they were hitting the ball about fifteen yards shorter. It was just it was a slog out there. It was really tough to make birdies, uh, except for I mean, obviously the par, the four par fives were gettable. They were just a lot longer, and you were seeing some of the longer hitters still not reaching them in two because of how soft everything that was, and they were kind of all upwind, so it was really tough. And that course actually showed a little bit of teeth out there. It was, it was the first time we've seen Detroit Golf Club show any of that um, adversity to the players all week. And my guy, Cam Young, was primed to charge and take his first PGA Tour win but he uh, had the snap hooks on Sunday and enough snap hooks and he got frustrated and broke the shaft on his driver. And when you break a club in frustration versus if it just breaks on its own, you can't replace it. So he played the most of the back nine with his three wood off the tee, which for him is still 300 plus yards, but he wasn't able to put himself in scoring opportunities on those par fives and he could not make a putt. I mean, we're talking about already one of the worst putters on the PGA Tour, had himself one of the worst performances I've ever seen any professional golfer putt on the back nine Sunday. He should have won going away, but you could tell he was steaming. He couldn't find the fairway. 
therefore he couldn't attack the pins like he wanted to and where the 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 golf course was there for the taking it just seemed like uh cam young was the most disappointing performer even though akshay had a chance to force the playoff it was just it wasn't enough cam davis did enough to win nobody really seized that win it was just kind of like well cam davis shrug your shoulders akshay pulls the four footer at the end and you got yourself your second win in Detroit overall, and that's that's awesome. But I mean, I had Cam Davis in DFS, but it wasn't somebody I was really betting on. So I was I was disappointed in Cam Young just kind of melting down uh, within himself. His golf game was frustrating him, but then the mental game part of it down the stretch, where even even down to the last couple of holes, he still had a chance, and he still just threw it away. Yeah, a lot of regrets from this one, Bo. A lot of regrets. Uh, maybe some guys looking for vengeance when they get to the John Deere Classic this week. More on the John Deere in a moment. But first, our friends at Underdog Fantasy are letting you make picks on your favorite golfers all season long. Just pick higher or lower on selected stats for two to five golfers, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single day. You can also make rivals picks, choosing, for example, which of two golfers will shoot a better score in a round. Golf picks can be combined with players' stats from other sports, too. Go sign up at Underdog Fantasy with the promo code BPGOLF to claim your special pick and to get a first-time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. The John Deere Classic will once again be held at TPC Deer Run in Silvis, Illinois. It's a course designed by former tour player D.A. Wybring. Uh, TPC Deer Run is a par 71 measuring 7,200. 89 yards. Fairways are generous. The bent grass greens are big and not especially challenging. There's some elevation changes and players will get some uneven lies on on these rolling fairways. Uh, But let's face it, the John Deere Classic is and always has been a birdie fest. Four rounds of 68 probably aren't going to get it done. Uh, They're not going to get you that oversized winner's check on uh, TPC Deer Run. You need to go low to win here. Sepp Straka is the defending champ. He finished at minus 21 last year. Two shots clear of the field. Straka opened with a two over par 73 last year, which would normally be a death sentence in this tournament. But he roared back with rounds of 63, 65, and a blistering 62 on Sunday. Other recent winners, JT Poston in 2022. He also finished at minus 21. Lucas Glover in 2021 finished at minus 19. No John Deere Classic in 2020 due to COVID. Dylan Fratelli won in 2019 with a score of 21 under par. And in 2018, Michael Kim completely blitzed the field, finishing minus 27, eight shots clear of the field. Yes. Now, the weather could make this slightly less of a birdie fest than usual. Maybe not unlike what we saw in Detroit on Sunday. Temperatures should be in the upper 70s to low 80s throughout. Chances for rain on Thursday and Friday, but nothing that looks too ominous. Probably won't be a washout, but it does look like it could get pretty breezy on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with winds of 10 to 20 miles per hour on Friday and winds of 10 to 15 on the weekend. What were your thoughts on TPC Deer Run and uh, this tournament in general? Pretty similar to the last week's tournament in Detroit. I mean, the Midwest swing is, uh, it is what it is. It's a, it's a lot of straightforward golf that if you're playing well, you can, you can do well in. And because the field is so weak, especially since Patrick Cantley dropped out, uh, we really don't have anybody that stands out as a superstar in this field. So it gets another, us another chance to talk about these lesser known names that are going to be household names in the near future. Uh, I, I actually like events like this because we can, we can take different approaches. Like, uh, some people want to condense their, their betting slip to something where you have one guy in each tier, or you have even one guy at the, at the, as a favorite and another long shot, and they just call it good and wait for next week's Scottish open or even the open championship in a couple of weeks. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to take a bunch of stabs, low risk stabs at a bunch of different guys ranging from the very top of the board to the very bottom of the board. I have a whole list of names to go over tonight uh, that is going that are going to be on the forefront of birdie making and getting getting the ball in the hole and getting hot at the right time. This this golf course really does lend itself to recent form. It's very important here. Uh, I'm I'm excited for this one. It's it's going to be fun 
and you'll like this, Pat. This tournament traditionally favors the Midwesterners. That's right. Uh, Steve Stricker, um, a, a fellow Wisconsin native, he uh, dominated this this for a long time. Mm-hmm. Iowa's Zach Johnson has fared well traditionally. Um, I yeah. think I think Adam Schenk, who's got a pretty good track record here, is also a Midwestern guy. So this yeah. has been a very kind tournament to the Midwest folk. Yep. Um, yeah. So and I, I do find this sort of a refreshing betting opportunity. We've had so many tournaments this year with uh, Scotty Scheffler checking in at, at odds of less than, you know, shorter than four to one and mm-hmm. some other guys. And, and maybe we would have seen pretty short odds for Patrick Cantlay. Who pulled out of the tournament was initially entered backed out and uh you know so now we don't have really any clear and obvious favorites uh but more on the odds and the field in just a moment if you want a chance to win a free one-year premium betting pro subscription subscribe to the betting pros youtube channel right now comment below on this video and that's it we'll be announcing a winner right here on the channel so turn on those notifications to be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize And speaking of Betting Pros Premium, with a Premium Betting Pros sub, you'll have full access to our new Betting Pros betting systems feature designed to help you find winning trends and make smarter bets. Create and customize your own systems by sport, by bet type, by time frame, or other selected parameters in order to find the most profitable betting opportunities. Not only can you make your own systems, you can follow other users' systems to track profitability and to tail upcoming bets in MLB, NBA, NFL, and college football. Download and use the Betting Pros app today to find profitable betting systems now. The field for the John Deere Classic, Bo, traditionally pretty weak. And, uh, you know, we're not going to see Scotty here this week. A lot of the top players are in the habit of skipping this in advance of the British Open. But with the John Deere Classic now coming two weeks before the British Open, Uh, rather than immediately before this year's field, not terrible. So let's get to the odds for the John Deere Classic, all courtesy of DraftKings as of Monday afternoon. Sung J M is the favorite at plus 1,600. Defending champ Sepp Straka and former John Deere champ Jordan Spieth, both plus 1,800. Aaron Rye is plus 2,000. Denny McCarthy plus 2,200. Davis Thompson plus 2,500. Maverick McNeely and Keith Mitchell plus 3,000. Nick Dunlap, JT Poston, and Jason Day plus 3,500. Sam Stevens plus 4,000. Luke Clanton, Kevin Yu, and Adam Svensson plus 4,500. And Eric Cole, Bo Hostler, and Lucas Glover plus 5,000. Anyone you like from this group, Bo? Start right at the top with Sung JM. Uh, even though he's not the greatest off the tee, it's really not penal here. Uh, he does well in easy scoring conditions. He does well when approach proximity matters, especially with pitching wedge and shorter. Uh, I think that the, you're going to see uh, Sung J M, who has found his short game, has found a putting stroke this season. He's having an underrated good season. He hasn't won yet this year, but I think this is a really good opportunity for him to show that he is a really talented. He's still a really young golfer. I think 24 years old. Uh, Sung J M, I'm starting at 16 to one, pretty confidently. Because this field is pretty weak, and I I hold I hold him a full tier and a half, maybe even two tiers over Sepp Straka and and Jordan Spieth just on form alone. Uh, those two guys, uh, Sepp Straka, better form, but he's not the type of golfer that Sung J M is and can be on a golf course this straightforward. Yeah, M has played this event twice before. Didn't do especially well. Finished twenty sixth in. 2019, 47th in 2021. Not a great track record, but as you said, Bo, I mean, M has been having a really nice season and he has finished top 10 in his last four non majors. Mm -hmm. He missed the cut in both the PGA and the US Open, but he was third at the Travelers, eighth at the Memorial, ninth at the Charles Schwab, and fourth at the Wells Fargo. That doesn't even include his win uh, in Korea back in May. And I think he was like just out of the top 10 at the um, RBC Heritage. I think that was a 12th. So Im's been in pretty good form, at least in non-majors. Um, you mentioned Straka. Solid season since finishing at the Masters uh, 16th. He's had four top 10s, including a tie for fifth at the Memorial last month. What about Jordan Spieth, Paul? 
I mean, he first appearance since winning the John Deere Classic way back in 2015. He's coming back almost a decade later, but his form has just been so poor. No top 25s for Spieth since a tie for 10th at the Valero Texas Open in April. His best finish since then, 29th at the Wells Fargo. Yeah, he's he's going to have to use this week to get his game right, especially on approach. Uh, typically, we see him spray the ball all over the place on the tee and get away with it, especially in a grinded out type of tournaments. That's where I like to see Jordan Spieth kind of find his way and, and impose his ability to scramble. This isn't that type of event. I need him to make a ton of birdies. And the, with the way he's been hitting his irons this season, I don't have any confidence at all in him. Uh, the name is the reason why he's so short this week. Nothing else. Uh, I'd much rather play Aaron Rye, a red hot Aaron Rye at two at plus two thousand. I'd also much rather play uh, JT Poston at plus thirty five hundred this week. Uh, those two guys are playing better golf than Jordan Spieth, and they're getting more favored. Uh, stat. I mean, the stats back it up. Th- both of those guys are playing outstanding golf this year, especially in events where birdies are necessary. Yeah, so Rye is a first-timer at the John Deere. If you're a better who doesn't like backing guys making their maiden voyage in a tournament, then maybe you're going to be off Aaron Rye. But he's coming off the tie for second last week in Detroit, and he's finished top 20 in four of his last six starts. So Aaron Rye is in really good form right now. Um, who did you mention, Poston or Denny McCarthy? I mean, both great putters. Yeah, uh, Denny, Denny worries me a little on approach, uh, but his putting, of course, is outstanding. He's really good off the tee. Uh, I I put him in kind of that same tier as Davis Thompson around that same range where, yeah, the stats look pretty good. I, I'm just kind of playing a little bit of favorites with my model here with Ryan Poston being just a little bit above those two. But I, I'm, I'm not mad at anybody who plays McCarthy or Davis Thompson at that plus 2,500 number or plus 2,200 in McCarthy's case at this moment. Yeah, Denny McCarthy has finished sixth at the John Deere in each of the last two years. Um, Poston, you know, the win here in 2022, finished tied for sixth with McCarthy last year. So, um, you know, and he, one of the best putters on the planet, obviously. Davis Thompson, like Aaron Rye, has also finished top 20 in four of his last six events, including a tie for second last week in Detroit Mm -hmm. and a tie for second at the Myrtle Beach Classic back in May. Um, Thompson does, he's only 25, Bo. Like he, he looks like he's a rising star. He he very well could be. Um, I don't know if he's the kind of golfer that can do it at any type of golf course yet. Uh, but on golf courses in weaker fields like this, where you, you have to make birdies, he's shown that he can do that. He just did it last week where, uh, he almost messed around and won that tournament because his Sunday was, I think it was close to the low round of the day on Sunday, uh, last week at the rocket mortgage. I think he's a good finisher, especially when the pressure is off of him. He doesn't have to chase down any big names this week. He can just go out and play his game. And if it's good enough, it's good enough. And that's a really good number on him. Any interest in Maverick McNeely at all? Uh, eighth here in 2022, 18th in 2021. Some. Uh, really good off the tee. Really good putter, obviously. Uh, his approach game worries me a lot, too. His wedge approach game has been atrocious this year. That's really the only thing keeping him off the top tier. He's definitely going to be in my DFS pool for for the people who are on DraftKings building lineups. He's going to be in the hunt. I just don't know if he has enough to win in a, at this type of golf course where you're going to have to stick it close to really get a lot of birdie chances that mean something. Putting doesn't matter as much here as it did in Detroit, but it still matters. Yeah. All right, let's swing over to the mid-range options because there are some interesting names here too. Patrick Rogers is plus 5,500. Seamus Power, Mark Hubbard, and Ben Griffin are plus 6,000. Ryo Hisatsuni, Daniel Berger, and Doug Gim, and Adam Schenk and Jatan Vegas are plus 6,500. Lee Hodges plus 7,000. Neil Shipley, Michael Thorburn, Thorbjornsson, and Andrew Novak are plus 7,500. And Jake Knapp and Torborn Olison are plus 8,000. Do you like any of the mid range options, Bill? A lot of great names, a lot of guys that I'm going to have to dig a little deeper on, especially the younger guys like Neil Shipley, who I wrote about last week and uh, did a nice cash out on the top 20 bet there with Neil Shipley. That was a great, great feeling to to throw the kid out in his first week as a pro and, and cash a top 20 on him. So we'll keep riding him. Uh, 
Thor Bjornsson, a little bit disappointing, missed the cut by one shot. Uh, that was, uh, he just couldn't find a putt to go down. I, I think we, we can wait a little bit on him. I, I don't know that he's, I, I picture him more of as Ludwig Oberg, where in a grinded out type difficult tournament where par is a good score, I think Thor Bjornsson's going to really thrive. But in these types of events, I don't know that he can make a lot of birdies at this stage of his career. Uh, so I'll kind of I'll kind of be on a holding pattern with him. I'm looking really close at two guys: Bo Hostler at fifty to one, and our guy Rio Hisatsune, sixty-five to one for him right now on Monday afternoon. It's an insane line, very top of my model, number one in every category, especially on birdie making, par four and par five scoring. His approach distance buckets for wedge distances have been outstanding, and his putting hasn't been that bad lately. I think Ryo Hisatsune has plenty of firepower to take this thing down, and at 65 to 1, that's that's a screaming value at this point. You're talking me into Rio. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, Bo, after the way you pumped up Michael Thor Bjornsson last week, um, yeah, he did miss the cut in Detroit last week, and and maybe you're right that he would be better at a grind it out sort of place, a, a Billy Horschel type course rather than a uh, birdie fest. But he did finish 17th last year in his his John Deere debut, which was encouraging. So I'm, he's got I'm the talent. Have... I know he's got the talent. I just don't know that we want to bet on him to win outright. I'd feel fine with a top 10 or a top 20 bet at this point because I I do want to get some skin in the game because he's that talented. Uh, but as far as an outright bet, I don't feel great about it since he's getting a little bit of infl- market inflation because of the the name swirling that's been going on since he turned pro. Uh, I I get the appeal, but I also want to be a smart better. Fair. Um, let's see. Adam Shank has has had a lot of success here. He's finished top six in three of his last four John Deere appearances, but he has not finished better than fifty fifth in any of his last seven events. So if you're looking for a horse for course, uh, Shank might have some appeal to you, but boy, the recent form has been pretty poor. I don't think either of us are going to have him on our betting cards. Um, two other guys in here who are kind of interesting. Patrick Rogers, 31st last week in Detroit, 16th two weeks ago at the Travelers. Not a stellar track record for him at the John Deere, but he did finish second here back in 2017. And Seamus Power, uh, top 25 in four of his five John Deere appearances, including an eighth last year and a 13th in 2021. I don't know. What do you think, Bo? Either of those guys generate any interest for you? Not on the betting market. I just, I just I don't feel great about them. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw money on somebody. I don't have utmost confidence, especially in this type of event where I'm looking to see some things from some of the golfers who pop up in my modeling, especially for bird making. Some of those guys that you mentioned, just have struggled to make birdies this year. It's just, it's a fact. And I, it's a really important facet of this event, just like it was last week. So I'm, I'm kind of piggybacking off last week's model to build this week's model because the events are so similar and the golf courses are not much different. What about long shots, Bo? Anyone with 90 to one odds or longer that you find interesting? Funny you should ask, Pat. I have quite a few. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hit All me. right. Starting at 110 to 1, we have Hayden Springer, who performed very well last week. He is 26th in my model, 14th in total strokes gained on easy golf courses, and 13th in birdie or better percentage. He's also the 11th best putter in this field. That stood out big time to me. Uh, this guy can make birdies and bunches. Uh, as far as bogey avoidance, that's kind of what killed him last week. I don't think that's as much of a play here because the weather kind of affected that on Sunday with him. But starting there at 110 to 1 with Hayden Springer is a great move. And then two guys at 120 to 1, Chan Kim, who we've known as a birdie making machine in easy tournaments. He's done it all year long. He f- kind of fizzles out in tougher events, but I'm all over him at 120 to 1. Same goes for Ben Coles. We, we've been talking about him at all these types of events where he, again, performed well last week. And we we expect Ben Coles on courses that if, uh, expect a lot of wedge play. He's going to be fine on those wedge approach distances. He's a really accurate driver of the golf ball. Uh, and then I got one really deep one, but I want to mention Kelly Craft. I'm not sure how much I'm going to put in on Kelly Craft, but he's showing encouraging signs, especially as a birdie maker and a really accurate tee ball player. Seventh in this field and good drives gained. The deep, deep shot is Austin Cook at 500 to 1. 
So mm, look up Austin is- Cook. Austin Cook came in at 20th in my model, and he's just all around a good player. He he tends to show up, gain strokes on the field, 17th in total strokes gained for this deep of a long shot. It it really stood out to me that that guy had such a big number next to him in the betting card, and he was up there with some of these big names like McCarthy and and Maverick McNeely. He's right in that same tier for me in in how I rank them statistically. So for me, that's an edge. And that's something where you can get really good odds on a top 20, a top 40, even if you make a cut made parlay, uh, that, that, uh, the, the betting on long shots that deep is really favorable, especially in a parlay because the, the books aren't really looking at these guys. There's not money flowing in on any of these long shots. That's why they're long shots. And so as long as we play it cool and close to the vest, put a little bit of money on them, it could pay off really big. Austin Cook, 500 to 1. Very interesting. Um, I'll throw in one more name as a long shot, Bo. Pearson Cootie, mm-hmm. who, uh, you know, terrible start this season, but he's kind of gotten it going a little bit. Finished he fifth does. at the Charles Schwab Challenge in late May. Big hitter who also ranks 18th in strokes, gra- strokes gained putting this year. Yeah. So seems like he might profile pretty well for this tournament. And at 120 to 1, I don't hate those odds. All right, Bo, who do you have on your betting card as of now? All right, we're going to start off with Sung JM right at the top, 16 to 1. Then I'm going to throw down some Aaron Rye and some JT Poston at 20 and 35. And I'm going to throw in uh, Ryo Hisatsune at 65 to 1. And I'll throw a little bit of dimes on Chan Kim, Ben Coles, Austin Cook. And I'm still deliberating on how much to put on some of these other long shots that I mentioned, like Hayden Springer, for example. Interesting. I'm uh, scaling back a little bit. I am going with Sepp Straka at plus 1,800. I, too, am going with JT Poston at plus 3,500. I like Michael Thorbjornsson at plus 7,500. And for top five at plus, uh, let's see, that's 16 to 1. Pearson Cootie at 120 to 1. And, Bo, I think you talked me into a uh, modest wager on Rio Hisatsuni. How can I abandon our guy now? Don't do it. Don't do it now. Before we get to our one and done picks, if you're playing in a one and done golf pool or if you're playing in any sort of tiers based majors pool this year, our friends at Pool Genius have a new product that gives you an edge. Using objective data like betting odds, course performance, and national pick trends, the tool highlights the top value picks that give you an edge. And it can all be customized specifically to your pool. If you're doing a one and done pool or a majors pool, let Pool Genius be your secret weapon. And by the way, Pool Genius isn't just for golf pools. You can use it for March Madness pools, NFL Survivor pools, and more for 10% off on the Majors tool and for up to 55% off on yearly packages that include all golf, football, and March Madness tools. Visit PoolGenius.com slash FantasyPros. Again, that's PoolGenius.com slash FantasyPros. Now for the one and done picks. Bo, last week, Akshay Batia for you uh, at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Good move. He finished in that four... (laughs) <laughs> four-way tie for second yes it could have been better uh but still good for six uh six hundred and sixteen thousand dollars four hundred six hundred and sixteen four hundred um i had steven yeager who missed the cut Bo, i have missed Oof. the cut with five of my picks this year you've only had one and you could uh justifiably argue for a mulligan in that one since it was the zurich classic that weird two-man team of that. If you're going to so, give it to me, Pat, I'll take the mulligan on that one because <laughs> nobody had any clue what was going to happen that week. <laughs> no. Um, so, Bo, you extend your lead to about $3.7 million. I'm up first this week. I'm going to go with Straka. How about you, Bo? The big Austrian, huh? Well, I'm going to go with the guy I didn't like last week, and it burned me, and I've already burned Sun JM. I killed, I killed that one before he was even good this year big regret looking back now but i think i'm gonna go with aaron rye very nice going with the hot hand totally get it straka for me aaron rye for Bo, and that's going to do it for this week's show thanks to our sponsor underdog fantasy sign up for underdog with the promo code bp golf to claim your special pick and to get that first time deposit offer of up to 250 dollars in bonus cash and please come join Bo and i again next week When the action moves to the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, we'll be previewing the Genesis Scottish Open in North Berwick. 
Until then, so long, everyone.